All right, we're having Bible study. We're having a uh, Thursday Bible study today instead of Wednesday Bible study because of last night's final part of the meeting. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer. Dear you know, Father, we come before you in thanks, reverence for all your many blessings. We ask that you be here among us. We ask that you give us enlightenment, encouragement. We ask that you strengthen and help us bring us together and help us walk closer in your steps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, we do not have any animations and so forth on this week's slideshow since we've had so much luck with that before. Uh, projector be on that. This week's Bible study is going to be on uh, kind of some practical application uh, life skills Bible study. We're going to talk about some verses and some scripture, and we're going to talk about uh, not only how big decisions we need to make, but little decisions we need to make need to be focused in truth. Uh, and here's my slide. All right. Uh, again, practical life application. Uh, bold decisions or indecisiveness. Uh, there's a spectrum there, and everybody falls somewhere in it. Uh, you can be too bold in your decisions if they're not rooted in truth, and you can be indecisive. Uh, I want to go here, I want to do there, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. I have to be very careful with that. And so we're going to take a look at what's involved in that. All right, so as people, uh, we know each other pretty well, so uh, we won't call out any names or anything, but we're all guilty to some extent, so we've all, all participated in this ourselves. Uh, do we struggle between two courses of action even when we know right from wrong or best from worst, but for whatever reason we still struggle flip-flop, can't seem to lock in a choice? Uh, I'm, I'm guilty of that sometimes. You know, a good example is when we're passing fiddle sticks. So, you know, we're, we're, what do we want for dinner? Probably every household in America struggles with it. What do we want for dinner? There's two courses of action. Of course, they're not, you know, there's not a right and wrong choice in that case, but are we decisive? Uh, even when a choice is made, do we keep that plan B in our mind just in case the other, ch other you know, I want to do this. Well, but I, I really want to do that, but you know what, let me, let me creep this way. But I'm keeping my eye over here on this other decision. I'm ready to unmake a decision. I've been guilty of that too. Uh, today with direct TV is a good example. Uh, we linger in indecision until circumstance pretty much force a decision. Now, I can tell you I don't have that problem. I have some of these other ones worse, but I don't have that problem. Uh, but some people do. A lot of people do. I need to do that, man. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I need to go roll up the windows, or should I just, uh, you know, get up early and go do it? Wait, 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 wait. Think about it, plan on it, make it, you know, da -da 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 -da, half step, do nothing, and then all of a sudden the decision is made for you. Uh, some people are a lot guilty of that than others. Like I can say, I, I, my, my faults send me in the other direction. Uh, my dad always told me growing up, you got a choice, there's a right choice and a wrong choice, and if you don't even know and you make one, you got a 50 50 chance. If you do nothing, it's wrong every time. Uh, don't let somebody else, don't give away your free choice or circumstance. We'll allow doubt, worry, emotion, or anxiety or accommodation to pull or press our choice in one way or the other. Boy, yeah, that's, that's big time. Well, I need to go and get this job, but if I get the job, I ain't got no shoes. So why am I going to get some shoes? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do about shoes. I'm going to get the shoes. I just don't know. Meanwhile, you worrying about a pair of shoes for a job you haven't got, and so you don't look for the job. You don't get the job because you're worried about shoes that you never need because you're not going to get a job. Uh, you know, in, in, in deliverance terms, uh, doubt, worry, and anxiety are all influences that are put on us. And so, you know, we're human. We're never, you know, I've been, I've been accused of being arrogantly self-assured. But I promise you, I have doubt, I have worry, I get emotional, and I have anxiety. Everybody does. It's good to our body. But, you know, it's just like your foot might hurt, but you still have to walk. And so you still have to, you have to overcome those things. Even after a choice is made, we don't feel just right about it. Anybody ever done that? And they say, okay, I'm going to do this, and, oh, man, it just feels kind of slimy. I'm guilty of that one. Uh, you know, collectively, we went out and did something last week, and I, I put a post on Facebook that got some people upset because I said, well, you know, we did what was right, but I just didn't feel, you know, just didn't feel right afterwards. So do you, then you got to make sure you don't want to go back and undo 
a decision. You just keep that mind going forward. Uh, we look back with what ifs and regret about past choices. Now, humans, we're always going to do that at, at some point. But at, at a certain level, you can do it too much. You know, if I say, I said, man, I really wish I'd have took uh, trig instead of calculus in the 11th grade. That's not helping me one bit right now today because that's over. Uh, and so you got to be forward looking, not rear looking. We feel justified, we feel just overwhelmed with the size and number of the tasks. In other words, uh, we had somebody that moved recently here. I can only imagine how I would feel if I had, if somebody came to me and said, Brother Mike, you and Sister Kim got to move, you got two weeks. Woo! I would just call for a dumpster. Ain't no telling what we'd be throwing and giving away. Because it would just be, the task would be so monumental. I would just feel crushed. Uh, of course, you would still have to do it. Uh, you know, we got called on Tuesday of this week to go feed 75 people on Wednesday morning. That, that's, that's pretty over, you know, what are we going to do in a few hours? But we persevered, we pushed through it, it came together, and we did it. We didn't, even though we felt overwhelmed and there was a lot to do, we made movement. Because it doesn't matter how much movement you make, how big the problem is, if you do nothing, the problem is not shrinking inside. All right, so with all these things we got going on, what do we got to do? We got to set a biblically sound, we got to make a biblically sound decision. Got to get that down. Got to decide what it's going to be. And then this is the hard, these two words right here are the hard part. Follow it. Uh, you know, if you make a, a map, Christopher Columbus is a bad example. Uh, if you make a map to cross the ocean, and then you get underway, and halfway through you're going, I don't know, maybe we should have went to Africa, you know, around the Horn of Africa. You know, you got a problem. You're staying all over the ocean. You lost. And so you have to get a sound, biblically sound decision, and then these two words right here, then it's human, it's just going to be hard, which is follow. Stick with it. All right, so decisions big and small. Uh, I got a lot here. There's a, there's a, we can fill this page up. Uh, and so, has anybody here ever wanted to lose weight? Yep. Uh, no. Is anybody awake? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Has anybody ever wanted to get in shape, get some muscles, you know, tone your body, whatever? Yeah. All right. Anybody ever want to stop smoking? All right. Anybody ever wanted to do more, do more outreach? You want to go help somebody? Want to help your neighbors? Want to help my aunt, a family member, whatever? You want to spend more time with your family, your kids, your wife. All right. Anybody ever wanted to change a bad relationship? Man, you know, this just ain't going in the direction I want to go. I want to do something different. Now, that change could be I want to fix this, or it could be this sucks. I'm done with it, or whatever. Uh, that'd be strengthening a relationship with someone. Maybe you had odds with your dad, or you had odds with a parent, or a sibling. All right. You got time as long as you're uh, alive to resolve that. Have you ever wanted to be free of money struggles? Because I know everybody here is rich except me and Kim. So, uh, but you know, have you ever like, man, why, why do I keep struggling? Uh, and you know what? Struggle is, is everybody. Uh, keep in mind that all of our worldly problems come from one thing: all of them, sin. And so, when uh, you know, we're very involved as a group. We share information. You know, we don't we don't have very many compart much compartmentalized information. Uh, and so when we have plenty of money, me and Kim have some extra money, y'all know it because we share it, we go do things, whatever. When we don't have money, you know it because we say, hey, it's all right, we ain't got two pennies to click together. Uh, but all, all struggles come through sin. And so as we consider, you know, all the different problems everybody has, uh, you know, Brother James might be struggling with, he wants to lose a little weight. And Robert might be struggling with, he wants to, you know, Fix a relationship with a family member. And I might want to get in shape. I do. So that's no, that's not a stretch there. But all that comes down to we're all human. We're all in the flesh. Uh, and, you know, we have to remember that every, everything that everybody's going through, we all share in common. Uh, we all have a common experience. No matter, you know, if you're Bill Gates living in the ivory tower or if you're a homeless guy living in a box in Alabama under a bridge. Uh, there's no temptation and no trials except those which are common to man. Alright. Before we can decide how we're going to make biblically sound choices, we have to go with something semi-complicated. What are the stages of making a choice? 
All right, these are the different stages of making a choice. Pre-contemplation. You are lost, wicked, confused. You ain't even thought about it. You're smoking happy. You're smoking two packs a day, and the only problem you ever have is when you run out of cigarettes, you got to run to the store. It is not a problem. There is no awareness of a need to change or no behavior suspected of needing to be changed. And so maybe, you know, this is really a decision, so you can fit that in there. You're unaware of it. All right, then you get to contemplation. By some means, a thought or behavior, lifestyle, or circumstance needs to be changed. It isn't clear for sure, but there's a doubt that this worth being evaluated in your mind. This is decisions you're making. And so if you're a smoker, maybe you get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you call for 35 minutes, and you go, man, whew, i got to quit doing this. Or maybe you're an abused woman. We, had, we met a young lady that she went from this category to this category, right? She was like, wow, I need to do something. Uh, and so she, she, you know, every decision we go from here, if you want to lose weight, you were fat and happy and chugging back cheeseburgers at some point, and then when you went and put your pants on and buckled your belt, hmm, wait a minute, my pants grew, I need to lose some weight. All right, so then we get the next thing is preparation. Preparation is when you decided that something needs to change, but how are you going to get from where you're at to change? The next is the action that's going to change. Behaviors have changed. This can be fun and thrilling at first, but it becomes hard when familiarity and comfort with the old habit is missed. So let's say maybe you uh, quit smoking, and so every time you were going to smoke, instead you get up, you walk outside, and you take a breath, or, you know, few good breaths of air and you think happy thoughts. Uh, but you know, that's a hard that's that's a hard stage right there because you have to break that habit. Uh, and the last is maintenance. And so after a few weeks or a few months, you're into the new habit. Uh, I use my going to the Y. I started going to the Y. It was very difficult to go to the Y every day at first. Because I had to get kids up, go to the Y, this, that, and other. But then maintenance, you know, you have to keep keep up with it. Maintenance is long time diligence. Don't replace it with the same bad habits you used to have, and don't pick up a new bad habit. Uh, all of these uh, decisions making, you can come down to two bad ways to make decisions. These are scientific words, so I'm going to spend a whole lot of time on them with you. Egocentonic basically means uh, we're going to use that in the context of I'm scared of bugs. Okay, I'm scared of bugs. And so, if I run through and jump out the window to get away from an ant and cut myself all to pieces, that's okay. I had to do it because that ant was in the room, so I had to jump out the third story window through the glass. Uh, and that's, that's screwed up thinking. The other type is uh, ego diopsis, which means you know they're bad. You know you shouldn't do it. Why, every time I see a bug, do I run back into the corner knowing that an ant can't bother me? But you do it anyway. Uh, you know it's not a good choice, but for whatever reason you do it, and you know, I go back, we we'll use that battered woman example, uh, the young lady we met, she knew it was bad, she knew she needed to be out of it, but what did she do? She went right back into it, knowing it was bad, knowing it was dangerous, and it was just, she tried to justify that behavior. Uh, all, all your decisions that are flawed, you know, whatever you're doing there, is going to sort out here, drinking, being abused, bugs, heights, poverty, you name it, whatever. Uh, compulsive behaviors like washing your hands. All right, let's see. The Bible uh, has a lot of references about indecision and people being indecisive. So let's kind of see what the Most High says about indecisiveness in general. Again, I've highlighted words that uh, I want to bring particular attention to with a different color. Uh, Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. The people said no. 1 Kings 18, 21. So what's that? What, what I want to bring attention to, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? What that two opinions means is you're standing there going, am I going left or am I going right? Am I going to fellowship with this person? that's cheating on his wife, beating his girlfriend, and, you know, whatever else. Am I going to associate with that, or am I going to not associate with it? Is that who I am, or is that not who I am? And uh, what Elijah was trying to basically, you know, the analogy, do your business or get off the pot. Uh, don't dilly-dally. Pick a, pick a path. And another thing I thought kind of was interesting, what did the people do when he said, you know, hey, are you going to uh, go to Walmart or are you going to stay at the house? you going to stay at home or are you going to Walmart? What 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 did when when they were asked what they do? 
They just waffled on some more. They still didn't pick a thing. All right, now we're going to Hosea 10 2. Their hearts be divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Uh, so what, what we're looking at here is up to this uh, colon. Their hearts is divided. Their heart is divided. That means they're between two choices, right? They can't make up their mind. They're wish washing, flip flopping. And then how, how are they judged for being double minded? They shall be found faulty. Uh, so don't be there. Pick a, pick a road, one or the other. All right, we'll go to Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. That's an often quoted Bible verse, uh, and it's very versatile. It's got a lot of truth in a lot of areas of life. Basically, what it's telling you here is, you know, a lot of people want to compromise. Well, you know, I, I know this is wrong, but I'm just going to kind of go along, get along. There is no get along, go along, because you do what? You, you serve one or the other, right? Not, not both. Uh, you need to be aware of that in your decision making. And so, you know, I could, uh, I got a friend that just went to Mexico. He was going to Mexico to look at naked women and drink booze. That's what, that was his, that's what he's going for. And asked me, did I, would I want to go? And I was like, no, I wouldn't want to go. Glad I want to go because, you know, it's out of the country and it's in a plane and it's all naked when I don't drink. So it's just all around, not me. But, you know, I could, I could have justified myself and said, oh, well, I'm going to go and try to keep him on the straight and narrow, and I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do that, or whatever. But ultimately, would that be serving Yah for me to go down and drink tequila for a week? No. So that would only be serving the enemy, and so therefore you don't participate in it. Um, remember, there's only two types of actions in the whole world. There's sanctified actions, sanctified decisions, and defiled. There is no neutral. Uh, you know, if we, we're going to eat after Bible study, that is a sanctified action because we've become in fellowship, we're going to bless the food, and we're together, and so that, that's an approved, anointed activity. Uh, if we got hungry and said, you know what, we're hungry, screw Bible study, we're going to go eat and stay and we'll run Bible study later, then that same activity would then not be appropriate. All right, so Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And here we got, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Mark, I think you said you want to, you thought about stop smoking, right? You want to stop, right? Your, your spirit, you know you want to stop, you want to stop. But, the flesh is weak, right? Uh, you want to get in shape? You really want to get in shape, right? But you haven't, right? That's because... Your flesh, to get up, your gluteus maximus muscles have failed you to get up and go do it. Your spirit knows it needs to be done, and so you do it. And so now, you know, it compares us to the world, and we, we're pretty good. When we know people are hungry, what do we do? Our spirit knows that they need help, and we compel our flesh to go do it, right? Because it'd be easy to sit at home and watch TV, or take our money and spend our treasure somewhere else. And so we overcome our flesh in that circumstance and let our spirit prevail. The spiritual man overpowers the flesh that man. And, you know, and, and outreach, that's a big important point. But the same applies to at 7 o'clock in the morning when it's cold and you know you need to go outside and do X. But that flesh that man is going, oh, well, I sure would prefer to uh, you know, not do that right now. We, and, and your decisions, that applies in, in the small decisions as well. Another really commonly quoted Bible verse, James 1.8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, we've known people uh, that, hey, uh, I'm going to be there at 8 o'clock. Okay, so everybody makes plans at 8 o'clock. You got everything on standby at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock comes, 8.30 comes, 9.30 comes. They never show up, and two days later, I forgot. Oh, I got sick. Oh, I, I, somebody else called. And so, uh, if that person was coming for something, imagine if you had a surgery, a, a sick loved one, you had to have a surgeon. And the surgeon is supposed to be there at 8.30. And the surgeon don't show up for a couple of days and your loved one dies. 
when somebody asks you, hey, that same surgeon is going to do surgery on my family, are you going to say, oh, well, he might do a good job, or you going to, you know, he's unstable. And so once somebody is, un, you know, we don't want to be that unstable person, we make our mind up, all right, James, I'm going to help you build a greenhouse. And then you out there waiting to build a greenhouse, and I go to Walmart, and, you know, get me an icy, and I go watch a movie, and drive around town. Meanwhile, you standing out there in 30 degree weather with a roll of plastic and some gloves on. Uh, and so when we make a decision, we need to stick with it because double minded means you undo your decision. I'm going to do this. Then you back out of it. I'm going to do it. The world is incredibly guilty of that because we're all so selfish just as humans, especially these days. All right, so decisions got to be made. And let's see what it says here. Uh, again, and if it seem evil unto you, you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose, the, in whose lands you dwell. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. All right, so pretty easy here, what I've got highlighted. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's not a one-time question. You know, years ago, when that first question first came on me and I made a choice, that that, that wasn't it. That, okay, I'm, I'm going to live this way now. Now, that choice comes on me all the time. It comes on me regularly. It comes on us every day, every decision we make. Uh, you know, Robert, you're new. When Bill called me and I talked to you, I made that decision. That, that question was put to me again because the enemy is constantly trying to pull you off the pay. Uh, James, same same situation. And every day, you're hit with it. You're hit with that same choice every day. And I promise you that 99.99% of the time, the world will make it easier for you to follow the false path than the true path. Convenience will make it easy for you to stray. Uh, so we, we choose at every moment uh, who we will serve. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James 1.22. Um, wow. I mean, that's do it. Yeah. Uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. Got to do it. When you make a decision, you, you know, we have to make a decision. When you get up in the morning and you're not sure what you're going to wear, you got to make a decision. Do it. Uh, you know, big decisions. Do you want to live to see grandchildren? Yes. If, you want to listen, if the answer is yes, then you got to be healthy. Uh, you know, there's a, a, a young lady I went to high school with, and she's on all these drugs and got all these problems now. And, you know, she knows she needs to be healthy, but somehow in her mind, you know, 400 pounds is okay. Uh, she has to put that into action. And that, that doesn't say, you know, be a doer so I'm not deceiving you. It's telling us to not deceive who? Us. I want to stop smoking. I want to stop smoking, but I can't. I can't right now. I mean, I, I can do it later. I'm going to cut back. I'm going to do it. You're lying to yourself. Uh, there's enough lying in the world and from the enemy without us allowing ourselves to deceive ourselves. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him it is sin. Uh, you won't hear this one a lot in the world, period. You will not hear it because they don't want you to do good. They want you to think if you don't do good, somebody else will take care. Pray for it. I'm going to pray for you. There's even a song, uh, a country song, where the girl breaks up with the guy or whatever. And says, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray your car breaks down. I'm going to pray your dog gets sick, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you know something is good, if you know it to be good, in other words, it is scripturally sound. There is my neighbor, and he is hungry, or he is cold, or whatever circumstance it is, and you do nothing, then that is sin. Uh, if you know, if you are living in sin, uh, nobody here is, but if you were shacked up, and you know that shacking up is wrong, you're in sin. But now let's take it a step further back. If you're my friend, if I call you my friend, if I call you my brother, and you are engaged in some recklessly stupid behavior, and I don't tell you, now I'm engaged in sin. And so that doesn't mean you got to come down and, you know, and bust somebody, you just simply let them know. Because they may be perfectly happy living 
under curses and drama and Jerry Springer and all that. They may be happy with it. Or they may not be ready to be separated from it yet. And so that's their choice. You love them anyway, that's, you know, hey. Some people like tomato sauce. Some people like tomato paste, whatever. Uh, and so if you know what is good and you don't do it, that is sin. All right, so we all have uh, a decision to make. And I, I pulled a, uh, a prime example out of here to kind of point to you. Jonah. Everybody's heard the story of Jonah, right? Uh, they, I, I'm using Jonah 1, 1, and 3, 1. And uh, let's take a look at, you know, so we so we know that the people in the Bible are human because there's no temptation except that which is common, right? So that means we all get hit with things and sometimes we make a misstep. All right, so uh, Jonah 1, 1 through 3. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amadi, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Damascus in the presence of the Lord, and went down into Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarnus, so he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it, to go with them into Tarnus from the presence of the Lord. And we know how that worked out for him, right? Uh, didn't, didn't work out too good. But here's the choice. Jonah had a decision to make. The will of the Most High moved upon him, he got the word of the Most High, but he rose up and headed the other way. Goodbye, I'm out of here. Uh, and now let's look, which was sin. Now let's take a look at Jonah 3, 1 through 3. Uh, and you know, I, I, on, on, when I talk to people all the time and in Bible studies, I say, you know, the Most High knows we're not all that bright. Humans are not like the sharpest bowling balls in the alley. And so he, he gives us chance after chance. He gives us instruction after instruction, opportunity after opportunity. Uh, and so he comes to, to Jonah again in 3.1.3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto them the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose, just like he did up there, and went to Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord. So, you can see it's almost the same. The Lord came upon him and said, hey, I want you to go over and do this. This is what is right. This is what is holy in my eyes. Go and do it. He said, ah, oh, no. So he came to him again. I am sure, like me, y'all have all been in that circumstance before. Where you, you start doing something, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is, this is not it. I thought this was going to be, you know, bubble gum and cake, but this sucks. This is... You know, I don't know what I thought it was going to be, but this is not what it is. I am now in a mess. And so then we have to make a different decision that's in line with him. And you know, the Most High doesn't care. You're going to go over that mountain. You're going to, you're going to handle that problem. He's going to bring you to that problem. And you can walk away from it, but all you're doing is walking around the problem to get right back to it again. Because you're going to deal with it uh, as long as you're breathing. So you might as well go on and do exactly what Jonah decided to do in Jonah 3, uh, which is do what he was told. Let's be mindful of the truth when we do it. In other words, consult it scripturally. Uh, you know, make a good, biblically sound choice. My experience for me, what kind of helps me keep accountable is when I make a decision, I try to, in my mind, I'm like, okay, everybody I know that I consider to be, that I consider their opinion. Basically, that's people who are keeping commandments and trying to live a clean life. They're all watching this decision, and I have to do it without any conversation. So someone says, just has to look at the face of it. Some things are complicated, might require an explanation, because you know everybody's not privy to the same information. But accountability is, truth is universal. So if I think it is the right and good thing to do, Brother James should think it's the right thing and good to do. So it's Kendrick, it's Peyton, Noah, Trinity, James, Mike, Leanne, which you all think it should be straight, straight above the board. No, no questions. All right, so prove all things and hold fast that which is good. <coughs> Anybody have any questions or comments? I lost this one. Input? I lost this one? Oh, man, again, this thing. I was thinking I lost one. All right, we're going to find it this time because I'm not going to record this video tomorrow again. Facebook. Oh, the Facebook slide. Where is my Facebook slide? All right, well, I won't go back for that one.
Uh, I, I, I got an example here. Uh, when you're done, when you make a decision that you're done with something, I'm done with cigarettes, I'm done with alcohol, I'm done with this man that beats on me, I'm done with this woman that cheats on me, I'm, I'm done with this friend that always abuses me and calls me every name in the book and has never done anything to anybody. When you're done, be done. If you want to fix it, fix it. If you're a happy in the misery, then you're not in misery. So quit fussing about it. Quit bellying. You, you kick the dirty egg sucking dog, so you rub it. Uh, and as an example of that, I got a friend of mine that, uh, uh, a brother, he's walking in faith, and uh, he's kind of new, he's taking baby steps, uh, but he had a Facebook post that I, I had a slide for, but I'm going to read it here, uh, just to show, you know, we, we have public statements. Uh, now, Facebook ain't the only place to make a public statement, obviously, but it's pretty public. Uh, and here's what he had to say. Uh, when I say I have cut ties with people, that means I have nothing to do with them and could care less what they say or do. That does not mean come message me every time you think of those people are talking about me and what they say. And to quote a, fan, a friend, whatever you heard about me, just assume it's true. That doesn't mean it is. It means I don't care. And flavorful language is what he said. Just clean it up. Just clearing that up so the whistleblowers and drama mark. So there you go. You know, uh, there's a few people in my life, uh, my family's life, that we have cut loose, done, bent over backwards, tried to hit them with the truth, eight, ten different directions, tried to be nothing but helpful and caring for them. One of them lived here in, in our home. We provided his all his food, all his clothes, gave him a job because we had a business at the time, did everything for him when his own family wouldn't take him in, and... Our rules were the Ten Commandments. You must follow, and a much more relaxed version of, than what we follow now. And he could not follow me. So he wanted to commit adultery in my house, again, you know, slipping around and hiding our back. And so, which I was prepared to forgive him for, even though he had already made all these other transgressions, but he came up with... I'm a grown man. What I do in my house is my business. You mind your business in your house. Why he's living in my house. I was a younger me, and so I said, you know what? I agree with you. I'm not going to use his name. I agree with you so-and-so. You're absolutely right. I apologize. Get your garbage, everything that is yours, and go. Go to your house. I told him before he left, I said, I'm done with you. When you leave here, I hope that don't go to no place where there's no oxygen. If there's no oxygen on Earth, and I have all the oxygen that there is, I hope you got a friend on the moon base, because you won't get nothing here. He's done. Uh, since we've come into closer faith, more adherence, we've had some people that's come to stay here. That were false brothers. I'm not going to call them out by name either. When I was done with them, they, they, they revealed themselves of what they were. I told them. Helped them get to where they were going, drove them where they were going, did everything I could for them. I said, hey, this is it. Both In both cases, they called, hey, I got no place to go. But you, well, then you have no place to go because you can't come in. When you make a decision, you know, you're not personally responsible to be everybody's keeper. So when someone has shown you again and again and again that they are a viper out to hurt you and take advantage of you and have no love or truth in them, let them be. You cannot make an apple turn into an orange. Let them go. If the Most High is going to move on them, He's not going to put you in a place and, and stumble you by putting you with a viper. Let them go somewhere else. There's been people in my past, I could not go and be in fellowship with them because of the way I behaved with them and the way they behaved with me. It just would not work. Our past would be an obstacle. There's probably been people in Brother James' past that just a the old, the dead us that they knew, or the them that we knew, would be a problem. And so, when you're done, be done. Yes, no. Can't make an orange juice out of apple juice. Can't make an orange juice out of apple juice. That's right. So we're going to close in prayer. Uh, before we do, I want everybody to, you know, remember this. When you decide in the grocery store whether you're going to get uh, X or Y, or whether you're going to wash the car, or whatever you're going to do, all these little small choices that, that doesn't seem like anything to you, every choice matters. Uh, 
all the big choices that we, some of us have raised our hands want to do, want to get in shape, want to lose some weight, want to stop smoking, want to do this, want to do that, do it. Tomorrow starts. You don't have to do everything in one day. Uh, every every decision is just one step, that first step. What are you going to do right now? Decide what you're going to do tomorrow doesn't really have a lot of weight because tomorrow's not here. What am I going to do in the next 25 minutes? Uh, and just carry on with that. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Uh, and, and unexpressible thanks. We are, we are so thankful and just in awe. Uh, we ask that you look at our hearts and, and understand our love and, and admiration, our thanks. And we ask that you bless us and keep us strong. We ask that you guide our path. We ask that you give us bold decisions. We ask that you infuse our choices and our decisions, our thinking, with your will and your righteous judgment so that we can go out in the world and live a life that will have the world see us as a light and allow you to pour blessings on us in accordance to your word. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray and praise you. Amen.